हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस फोकस्टिंग टुडे विल एंटर इनटू द मॉड्यूल ऑफ एरिमा बट बिफोर वी गो इन डिटेल्स ऑफ एरिमा विल अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एसीएफ एंड पीएसीएफ दिस टू टर्म्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्टेप्स ऑफ एरिमा इन एरिमा वी हैव ऑटो रिग्रेसिव मॉडल we have moving average process and then we have arima model and auto regressive integrated moving average process that is called arima model all these three four models we learn in detail but before that we need to understand the concept of auto correlation function and partial auto correlation function in time series models you have the same variables data right with time so therefore when you develop a auto regressive model you need the correlation between the data of current lag and the past lag and their features in order to understand that lags and their correlation between the current data and the old data how they are interdependent among each others you need a cf and partial auto correlation function so you need to study that today and then we'll enter in the next day into the arima model now even before we go to acf and pscf let us understand or recap the basic concept of correlation coefficient and partial correlation if you know these two concept effectively for basic regression analysis of between any two variables that concept can be extended to time series data and we can understand easily the scf and pscf function so first what is correlation coefficient we all know correlation coefficient is the correlation linear correlation between or linear relationship between two variables if you have a variable say x and y x and y and you have if you have a data set you can find the correlation coefficient between them using excel right so this this is the formula covariance by variance of x and variance of y and then using that formula you can calculate the correlation coefficient of the two variable x and y this is the linear relationship between the or how they are correlated that can be calculated the range of correlation coefficient generally lie between minus 1 and 1 now the question is that if there are say three variables and you need to find the correlation between x1 and x2 and x3 is involved over there also which has a impact on x1 and x2 in that case look at the definition the correlation between two variables may may sometimes be affected by a third variable or other variables in that case you need to eliminate the impact of the other variable to find the correlation between the main two variables that means if you have three variables so x1 x2 and x3 suppose three variables you have and you need to find the correlation between x1 and x2 or x y z so whatever but x3 will have a impact between x1 and x2 on in that case the impact of x3 has to be eliminated then only the correlation of x1 x2 can be calculated otherwise there will be a interdependency among the variables so that correlation is not the actual correlation so therefore we need to calculate the partial correlation so let's see what is partial correlation uh, here i have mentioned few more examples to get a clear picture of the idea of what is partial correlation correlation coefficient is simple the relationship between the two variables but the in partial correlation what happens you know the third variables or the other variables might have a impact so you have to eliminate that look at the example the correlation between prior experience suppose you are a candidate for job or whatever prior experience and job performance may be affected by the educational qualification imagine if educational qualification is another variable which might have a impact on your prior experience as well as the experience for in your profile in your cv as well as say you know job performance similarly you can think about that you know the written test and interview might have a impact from prior academic performance so your academic performance will have an impact on your written test and interview in that case if you want to find the correlation correlation between written test and interview your prior academic data performance is having a impact on that so therefore you remove the impact of prior academic performance and then find the correlation between written test and interview in a completely you know 
as an independent variable, no impact of academic performance. In that case, if you find this correlation between the written test and interview, after removing the impact of performance, academic performance as another variable, say, then this correlation coefficient between written test and interview will be called as a partial correlation coefficient. This into understand and in time series we require this part, this partial correlation coefficient rather than correlation coefficient. Both are required but these two are major concept in understanding SCF and PSCF. I will come to that now and then the ARIMA models. This is the basic recap of correlation and the partial correlation. right? Now how to calculate the partial correlation? The concept of correlation coefficient is easy and you can calculate using basic Excel. But for partial correlation, you need some steps because the concept that example that I have given you can understand but how to execute it in Excel say or in data that I have mentioned here. The steps, look at the steps here, how to calculate the partial correlation between the data. Suppose you have three variables as I mentioned, x1 capital x1 say x2 and x3, three variables and you want to remove the eliminate the impact of x3 among x1 x2 say. So now what we have done, first you take the center of the data like you take the calculate the average of each data, average of each data and then like you have a data say, you have the data say, you take the average of these data, this is a bar, average of the data, same, same way for all three variables, all three parameters say, you know in Excel you might have, you can understand that, calculate the average of all of them and then take the differences. You will get the center of all of them. Take that data, okay, after differencing from the mean. And then let us note them with new variables, say small x1, x2, x3. These are the new representative now because we have not taken that, we have scaled down the data now. The variation has come down, only the gap or variation we are calculating now, we are counting now. So these variations of the data we will consider of each variables. Now this will be replaced with small x1, small x2, small x3 now. So because we have taken the differences only, the differences among them from their mean, this data we will take forward to calculate the partial correlation among the actual variable x1, x2 and x3. Now we want to remove the impact of x3 from x1 and x2, right? So you regress, next step, you regress x1 upon x3 and x2 upon or against x3. So now first you regress x1 against x3, so we have done that. Remember here you don't need, since we have already done the center of the data, you don't need the intercept part, right? Only the slope part is sufficient, so you don't need the intercept part force the intercept equals to 0 in your excel and then you do the regression. You will find the you know direct slope which will pass through origin, not a matter. So you found the relationship between them x3 and x1, how x3 is explaining on x1 or how x1 is explained the new variable, the scale variables after, after taking the center of the data. How the x1 which is representative of capital x1 main variable, your objective is to calculate the correlation or partial correlation between capital x1 and capital x2. But x3 is coming into the picture, which is impacting x1 and x2. So you have to remove, eliminate the impact of that. That we are going to do now. So now what do you do? You regress the new scale data x1, center data x1 with x3. That means how x1 is explained by x3, right? The variations. This we have developed. Similarly, we calculate regress x2 against x3. That means how x2, small x2 is explained by x3. That you can calculate. Take the difference of them, you will find a new component, say E1 and E2 I have noted here. So these are the new components, the differences between the scale data of X1 and its regress data with X3. So these values, you will get, suppose this is component 1 between X1 and X3 of regress data and this is say X2 and X3. So these two data if you collect and if you calculate the correlation coefficient, whatever this will be called as a partial correlation coefficient, actual correlation coefficient, partial means actual without having any impact of x3. So that we have removed now and this is nothing but the partial correlation of two variable where the third variable impact has been removed. Look at here, therefore the correlation between E1 and E2 represents the partial correlation. Clear now? I will explain that using Excel later. So these are the two basic concepts, correlation coefficient here which we have discussed in this slide and partial correlation which we have explained the steps here, the calculation process. The concept is mentioned here but the steps of calculation is mentioned here. So these two will help you in calculating SCF and PSCF now 
which will go to Arima model. Now, look at these formulas. Here, you can see, note down this particular formula. In many books, this has been not mentioned here. Using this formula, you can calculate, in Excel, you can calculate the PSA. What is that? The partial correlation between 1 and 2, x1 and x2, given x3, equals to nothing but the correlation coefficient between 1 and 2 minus 1 and 3 into 1, 2 and 3 and this, this. So this formula are very popular formula. You can use this formula to calculate the partial correlation. Through these steps, you, you can get, otherwise, you can follow these particular steps that I have mentioned or direct this formula. Anyone you can follow. We will follow these particular steps that we have discussed today. Now, look at the autocorrelation. Now we are going to go to the time series data. Now we have entered into the time series data. Right. Now in time series data, we have same data say y. Right. So y1, y2, only one variable. You don't have any, you know, independent variable here. Like this. You don't have any independent variable. And you need to find the correlation among the data. What does it mean? It means that you want to see how your current data are being impacted by the past data. That means how, say, you are at this position, say, how your y6 is impacting by y5. How your y5 is being impacted by y4. Or how y4 is explaining y5. That you want to calculate. That we call it a lag, past lag, 1 lag, 2 lag, 3 lag, like that. This way, how like is the stock price or say, you know, temperature. How yesterday's temperature has an impact or how much impact it has in today's temperature. So that correlation, that linear relationship we want to find. This relationship, we call it a autocorrelation. Why auto autocorrelation coefficient? Because this correlation coefficient are not from two independent variables, two different variables. Not, it's not like that x and y. And you are finding correlation coefficient between them. Here, effectively, you are having the same data sets and among them you are trying to find the correlation. Therefore, we call it the autocorrelation. More detail I will explain. This is the formula. You can see co covariance between current data and say k period lag. Right. And that correlation you want to find. Say y4, so y6 and y5 or y6 and y4, y6 and y3. So the impact of the older lags or older data you can also calculate through correlation coefficient. We will understand the first case like only one period lag and then you can extend that concept to the older like like multi period lag also so this is same logic covariance of current and the older data that current corresponding period you want to consider so suppose this is y6 and this is suppose y3 so you want to calculate the covariance uh, correlation coefficient autocorrelation among them so you calculate the covariance and the variance among them also and this will come as a to some extent say you know uh, square because it's the same data so ultimately it will be the same almost and then you can calculate using this formula right so now we will find the plot as well as the lag impact on them, right? So here, let's take one practical example and we will plot the SCF as well as the concept calculations we will illustrate here now. Suppose we have taken three months data of TCS from NSC, National Stock Exchange. We have taken the TCS data, the actual data we have taken and we will understand the SCF. The basic correlation coefficient you know, right? Basic correlation coefficient you know, which I have shown you in the previous slide, and the basic calculation formula you, you can calculate between two variables. First, let us understand the SCF, and then we'll go to the PPSCF. Now, remember here, it's a time series data. It's a time series data. You do not have any, you know, kind of um, two variable, three variable, same variable here, and the other say stock price of TCS. How will calculate the SCF? What is the concept? Let me repeat it again. Suppose here you have the data say y, this actual data suppose here y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, y7, y8 dot dot dot. Then what you do in Excel, you take a new variable say, say suppose this is yt, this is say yt minus 1. Just copy this data and paste one row below in your Excel, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, y7, y8 like this. Remember, this data we have copied, this data we have copied and pasted one row below. Now you delete the first row and delete the last row say, delete the last row. Now you have a pair of data. Look at this pair of data, let me put a highlight, you will get a better clarity. 
look at you have this data and you have these data sets right you have the pair of data now same pair of data and if you ask the computer or your excel that find a relationship between this data set and this data sets so excel will consider this as one variable say and this is another variable say so this suppose excel will consider let me open the pane again so excel will consider this say you know one variable say say x1 and say this is true say say x2 or you can say excel will consider this as a y t and this is y t minus 1 so that means say you know or say as i mentioned x1 and x2 say so it is a yesterday data set this is nothing but yesterday data because you have taken the tcs stock price so here this yesterday this this y1 has come here you can think then y2 has come here y3 has come here y4 has come here it means that y5 now you have taken a pair right you have now taken a pair so y5 will be dependent on y4 this is your say y this is your x or x and y whatever or x1 x2 you can consider so now you have a pair of data say just all yes these are all yesterday these are all yesterday actually right as compared to this first column and these are all today these are all today so wherever you are you are today you appear at y7 y7 year today stock price y6 was your yesterday stock price but y y6 you have kept in your excel in the same row of y7 so this pair of data if you give it to excel and if you ask excel to calculate the correlation coefficient excel will calculate the correlation coefficient suppose 0.8 but this correlation coefficient are not simple correlation coefficient this is auto correlation coefficient why because this is the auto data same data done you understood the correlation auto correlation coefficient or auto correlation function now we have to plot it right so what do you do you take the data and copy in the next column but one row below then drop delete the first row and the last row. i'll show you in excel and last row then you have a pair of same data sets you ask the excel to calculate the correlation coefficient simple correlation coefficient formula that i have shown in my previous ppt you can slide you can calculate so this is nothing but correlation it is but actually auto correlation coefficient right so now you draw that so here your scf auto correlation function and this is your say lag right time say or you can say lag so now with the same data if you draw the same your correlation coefficient will be always one right if you copy the same data y1 y1 y2 y2 it will be always one so we are not interested about that we what would like to study from the first lag first period so lag one you consider lag one so this this correlation now y t and y t minus one or today and yesterday you suppose you found point eight suppose you found point eight you draw it point eight now you calculate you might say the right sir my stock price might depend on day before yesterday also so two days back also so why you are not considering that correlation among them it might have an impact of today's stock price also so you copy their data again and then paste from here so y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 like this this and then you drop the first two row just delete the first two row and the last two row you will have a pair of data now here you can see y1 has come here sorry it will start from here y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 like this so you can see look at this data set now look at this let me put a different color highlight with green so look at this this data set now even here you can you can see this so here effectively your y3 will depend on yesterday y2 and y1 so current stock price will depend on yesterday stock price and day before yesterday stock price now you want to find the correlation among them this correlation are called the auto correlation also so now this will give you the scf like you know ar model auto regressive model of order one or order two i'll discuss in the next class but now let us focus about simple scf and pscf so here you can see this relationship between current and day before yesterday to one day back if you find the correlation you might find it here say say maybe, maybe say 0.6 so so it is two lag, two days lag and then again if you put one more data you may find a lack correlation between them say you know 0.7 say 0.5 so these are nothing but the SCF plot or correlogram one part of correlogram that is called SCF plot PSCF we will discuss later now so this is what the SCF and plot here I have shown you the calculation process here you can see we have the actual data then copy them and paste one row below one row below one row below one row below 
and uh, now suppose you want to calculate the ACF of order 1, ACF of order 1, that means you just take current and the 1 lakh below yesterday. When you calculate the drop first, delete first row and the last row, you will get a pair of data, you calculate your first correlation coefficient, auto correlation coefficient because it's the same time series data, therefore you, you have to use the word auto. Auto correlation coefficient, same formula. Simple, we are using the word auto because you are same data you are copying and you are considering as a dummy independent variable. And therefore we call it the ACF of lag 1. Then if you calculate the current and the one lag older, so it will be a two days back data. So in that case, the correlation between them will be called SCF of lag 2 and you can calculate here. Here, look at here. You can take the data and directly all the data you can take and you can, if you have a larger amount of data, directly you can calculate your SCF graph function through this formula of correlation and we found the lag and the corresponding correlation you can see. So here, you know, the, with the immediate data, you have a maximum impact. The correlation is very strong. The next day correlation is little lower, then it is reducing actually. That means older data of TCS are not impacting to the current data much. But there is a relationship. There is a relationship. This is called the SCF plot drawing in correlogram. Clear to everybody, I believe. Now, Let's go to the next level that is called PACF calculation. Same logic, just you need to understand the partial autocorrelation, not the actual correlation because the auto part are being there with the same data. But the point here is that here in this case, in this case, you have calculated the direct correlation, right? So here you can see how much in the first case it is 95%. The correlation, the yesterday stock price is impacting today's stock price with almost 95% that it is explaining. Look at the day before yesterday, it is also 90%, 90%. But the practical case is that this is the direct correlation. But the practical case, since it's auto data, this second day data, like day before yesterday data, will not have this much of impact, 90% impact with your current stock price. The reason is that there is an intermediate data called yesterday, which was in between. So, when you take the data of yesterday in your current data and calculate the correlation, this is fine. But when you go one lakh back or one day back, day before yesterday, in that case, your the impact of day before yesterday data in the current data should not be the same. You have to take the partial impact of that because yesterday, someday was a today. Then day before yesterday was a yesterday. And then yesterday was a today. So that impact also is there already. So you cannot take direct value of yes day before yesterday into your current. You have to see the remove the impact of yesterday between the current calculation correlation between today and day before yesterday. This is called the partial correlation. Let's see how you can calculate it. This is the formula, same formula, PSCF with the same lag now. Now we are not taking the x1, x2, etc. We are taking the same auto data. So you can take yt, the not general formula people use like this. Yt with how many lakh? Like 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh. If you take 1 lakh, then Yt and Yt minus 1. If you take 2 lakh, then Yt and Yt minus 2. So this is the, the relationship is said to be direct and exclude the relationship with the intermediate lag. Intermediate lag has to be removed. Suppose that, for example, if you want to impact, calculate the impact of, say, today and yesterday, today and yesterday is fine, but today and day before yesterday, it may not be like this. It may be very less amount. The reason is that, it is a partial impact. You cannot take the full impact. The intermediate lacks impact has to be removed. Right. So that we are going to do through PSA. Now, what are the steps? I have already mentioned that simple partial correlation calculation steps. Same calculations we will be using here. But in that case, we have talked about X1, X2 and X3. And we have seen the impact of X3 on X1 and X, X1 and X2. That we are not going to do here. What we will do? We will consider here now yt current i would say yt and then yt minus 1 day before yesterday and day before yesterday right we want to see the calculation the pscf between these two yt and yt minus 2 these you want to see yt and yt minus 2 you want to see this rather i would write the arrow here, this side so the impact of this yt minus 2 on yt the correlation we want to calculate but this correlation should be called as a partial correlation or partial auto correlation because it's auto data, same data, same time series data. You have put in a different column only, but it's the same data. But Excel will understand these as a independent variable, some variables. But we know it is auto data. So therefore, we need to find 
these two are same same simple partial will be the same as it is autocorrelation because it's a just a study direct impact you have to take but for debit theory study you cannot take the direct full impact you have to take partial impact because because intermediate a study is already been involved over there so you cannot take the direct impact because it will be very less impact because you are taking full impact of yesterday so only partial impact of day before yesterday you have to consider how to calculate it same logic here what you have to do in this case here you have to remove the impact of yt minus 1 from yt and yt minus 2 and then center the data and calculate the actual partial correlation between yt and yt minus 2 so here steps are center the data of all these three data you might have sir you might say so these are the same data only one row below etc so how to calculate center same everybody will have the same center like average data everybody will have the same average because one data if you delete it will not have much impact if you have a longer amount of data so everybody will have the same average and then you calculate the center center value will be different so this data this the scale data will consider and then we'll calculate the partial correlation so here first do the center data then calculate the slope of yt and y2 because we want to calculate the PSCF between yt and yt minus 2 day before yesterday capital y say we want to calculate that that is our objective the partial between partial autocorrelation function or partial autocorrelation value between yt and yt minus 2 we want to calculate that right day before yesterday impact on current the partial impact of that actual impact of that in today's stock price so that we want to calculate so center the data first for every three all three today yesterday and day before yesterday then calculate the slope like the regress you have to calculate the slope and regress and slope of y2 against yt minus 1 slope of yt minus 2 against yt minus 1 because here we want to remove the impact of yesterday from both from yt as per the formula of PSEF from yt and yt minus 2 and then once we get the you know impact less data between yt and yt minus 2 and then calculate your correlation that will be your partial correlation then calculate the component of et and you know et minus 2 component you can say error not error but it's a gap differences right and then calculate the correlation between them these correlation are nothing but the partial correlation let's see and how we can draw it you will see the actual impact it will be very less actually not the actual partial the actual correlation here you can see the actual correlation 90 percent 85 percent but it will first one will be the as it is but after that you will see the partial will be very less maybe these these this it will be fall down quickly because older data will not have a much impact because it is a partial impact we are considering let's see how it works now the steps center the data then regress after taking the center data regress the scale data or the impact of current we have taken a notation of yt minus white small yt in the previous pa uh, partial correlation slide i have shown that so same notation we will consider so yt the impact of yt minus 1 yesterday scale data yesterday on yt and impact of yt minus 1 on yt minus 2 here we are calculating the correlation between the partial correlation between these two so we will consider these two variables and we will we'll remove the impact of yt minus 1 remember this differences this concept here now you can regress now this we are considering as independent variable now after scaling scaling down the data so this impact we want to calculate right and we want to remove so what do you do regression and calculate you calculate the slope and the corresponding regress regression data regress data and then you will find the difference between them as your new component the gap similarly yt minus 1 on yt minus 2 and you will get the component so these two component you will get et and et minus 2 calculate their correlation simple correlation that will be your partial correlation done so now you take these two and calculate your partial you can either use this formula or that formula or the steps that i have mentioned let's see so here you take the actual data then one day back look at yt minus one and two days back just copy and paste and you can get to know like this i have removed all this i'll show you in excel and then take the average of this data average of this data average of this data now you are in excel now excel have the three variable this variable this variable this variable and you want to calculate the PSEF. now excel will not understand this is the same data but you know it is auto data so the everywhere will use the auto part auto word otherwise it is just simple partial correlation we are calculating the steps that i have mentioned earlier so now you calculate the center of each of them average of all of them all this data to some extent average value will be the same and then you calculate the center so this minus this this minus this this minus this for it current data 
now you calculate the center this minus the average data you will get the center of second data second period yesterday data t minus 1 data and center of day before yesterday data that is t minus 2 data so this is the scaled down data so this is we are using small y t small y t minus 1 not as a notation small y t minus 2 right so these notations we are considering now so capital y t y t minus 1 and y t minus 2 for the timing we are not considering scale down data we have taken now we call it a center data take the center data calculate the slope between these two slope between this and then once you get the slope you calculate your regression value and that will give you the component the et and et minus 2 these two components the current uh, like you know partial data will give you the partial correlation or the difference data will give you the new partial correlation or PSEA value. So now what you do? You can think about say you know, center data you have already calculated. Now calculate the slope between this and this. Look at here. Similarly calculate the slope between this and this. Look at here. You have calculated the two slope. Note down. Once you get the slope you can get the regress line y equals to mx y equals because intercept we have considered zero. So that and this is the additional parts, the component part, and now take the difference, this minus this, you will get the component. Here we have done that. Look at, two slope we found, corresponding regression line you will we'll get, here we have calculated the regression line, you can see, and if you subtract that from your actual data, now center data is your actual data, right, to some extent, though it is a scale data, we are considering actual data. So you take the difference, sorry, you take the difference among them, you will get the component, new component, now you have a new data, fresh data, after subtracting the you know impact of the intermediate data and then calculate the correlation between these two data set this will be nothing but partial correlation or we can say the auto auto partial correlation coefficient clear here you can see you can calculate this this data sets are nothing but these two and you calculate your correlation between them this is nothing but partial correlation effectively you found the partial correlation between capital yt and yt minus 2 so yesterday today and day before yesterday not yesterday this correlation you found this is called partial correlation earlier it was 90 percent now you found only minus 10 10 percent imagine that you can see here earlier it was how much Here you can see 90%, look at 90%, day before yesterday impact on current data. But now you can see, even here also 86, 83, you can remember it, it will fall down suddenly. Because partial impact we are considering, now this huge impact will not be there. So therefore you cannot take, in ARIMA models, I will discuss in the next class, you cannot take SCF graph and corresponding impact. You have to take the PSCF graph in calculating your lag, in developing your regression model, autoregressive model. In Arima, I'll discuss that detail. So here you can see it was currently nine ACF value is ninety percent autocorrelation, but partial autocorrelation was minus point one. You can see here it is minus point one. Here you can see the further graph minus point one, and then you can see point three only, point zero three, three percent only. Here it was eighty six percent earlier. Here it was ninety percent. Here it was ninety percent. You can see. So it is drastically falling down. Look at here. So this is what the PSC. The first one, immediate data will have almost same data, like 95%, 95%, whatever. Then onwards, you will see the impact of it. This is what the partial autocorrelation coefficient or partial autocorrelation function. And this is called the correlogram of PSCF graph. The previous one, the correlogram of SCF. Put together, we call it a correlogram of time series data. Now, this part, we will understand in Excel and then we will wind up today's session. Let's go to Excel. So here we have taken the TCS data of last three months, say three months, so October to October 2023 to December 2023. Three months data we have taken. So here the data we have taken from the NSC site and you calculate the SCF. First you can understand the SCF. Look at the tag here in the sheet, SCF calculation. Simple, you copy the data and draw paste one row below like copy and paste one row below here I don't want to copy because my data will change calculation will change but you can do that here right so you can see 
two lakh, three lakh, just you have copied, copied and pasted. Now you want to calculate the SCF between current data YT and YT minus one. Simple calculate the correlation coefficient. You will find ninety five percent. This one, you will find this one as the correlation between current and yesterday, right? Or one day lakh data, one day period, old period data. So it's a time TCS data, top stock price. You can consider as I said, uh, Dow Jones or Nasdaq data also. You can consider. You can also consider say uh, you know gold price. You can also use the temperature or say crude oil. Wherever you want to apply the Arima model, these concepts will help you in developing the Arima model. Today we are discussing the background SCA and PSA concept. Once you understand this, Arima model will be very easy to understand. Just you know maybe ten minutes will be taken to understand the AR process and then ME process, then Arima process one by one. We'll discuss in the next one one or two session. So now. If you want to calculate the lag between current and yesterday, one lag, one hour lag of time series data, you take this data and this data calculate the correlation coefficient. Now you want to calculate two lag, two period lag data. So consider this data and two days back data. Like, I mean the lag two of day before yesterday data you consider and you calculate your correlation coefficient. Like in that case you take data from here and sorry here. So what you do? Correlation between say these data. Let me say today and the day before yesterday. We'll say say this and then we'll consider say day before yesterday. So we'll take from here till this last two data will delete. We we'll calculate. So we have calculated the correlation between yesterday today and day before yesterday. Here it is ninety percent. Here you can see. I believe it is clear to everybody now. Look at this. This and this same. So this is nothing but the correlation between current data and day before yesterday data. So this is what your SCF calculation. Similarly, here I have drawn the graph, correlogram graph. Here you can see 0.95, then 90 percent, then 86 percent. All this data we have plotted here. This is your SCF calculation. Now you go to PSCF. So five steps. First step is that center the data. First, you calculate the average. So we have taken the average of the data. So what we have done? We have suppose only three period we have taken today, yesterday, and day before yesterday. More detail you can develop in different software, say you know Python, etc. But the basic steps of PSA calculation I have shown here. So now this is your current data. This is your yesterday data. This is your day before yesterday data, right? So now you have to take the center of the data, the scale data. You have to take. So first, you calculate the average of all of them. Everybody will have the same average as I mentioned in the PPT. Take the center of the data, current minus average for everybody. Current minus average for everybody. Current minus average. Now this data, look at this column number A and G. This data is your center data, right? Now what do you do? You calculate the slope between current, and you want to see, you see the partial correlation between YT and YT minus two, right? And you want to remove the impact of YT minus one. So this day before yesterday, how it is impacting to your today's data? That you want to calculate, right? So therefore, what you do? You calculate the regression between current and yesterday with scale data, center data, and between day before yesterday and yesterday. Yesterday will be your the with with scale data will be your independent variable here to calculate the regression. So now here you can calculate the you can calculate the you know slope. Between current and yesterday with center data, and slope between day before yesterday and yesterday. Look at day before yesterday. And look at H is first, and then G is coming second. So calculate the correlation or slope between them also. Now using these slopes, you can calculate your components. What is that? The current minus the regress data. Current minus regress data. So you know slope into this value minus actual minus the current minus slope into this value. So you can calculate. Using this formula, you can use you can use this formula. Look at my mouse, and you can calculate the center uh, new new component data for everybody. Look at here, sir. Look at. So you are taking first H, and then you are subtracting the say slope into y t minus one. Look at slope into y slope into y t minus one. You are subtracting that from y t minus two. So you are y t minus two is your new uh, main data variable data. And y t minus one is your independent data. So for the sake of understanding, so you are seeing the impact of that. So now you found these two component, k column k and column l, 
after removing the impact or eliminating the impact of yesterday. Now these are phase data, right? In, like you know the impact, the, the impact or the dependency of yesterday is been removed from both from today's data and day before yesterday data. Now you have the fresh data of today and day before yesterday. Find the correlation among them. Simple correlation among them. This correlation is nothing but the partial correlation between actual stock price of today and day before yesterday. Between the actual temperature of today and day before yesterday. Between the actual crude oil, crude oil price of today and day before yesterday. This partial correlation coefficient you have to consider in your ARIMA model. How, why that we will discuss in the next class. We can see the PSCF here. So this if you come back to your you know PPT, you can see this I have men mentioned here. Here you can see this point 1, minus point 1 and point 0 0.03 are coming here into your PSCF calculation. Not the actual correlation, it is a partial correlation. But in ACA it was 90%, 86%. But here it is just point 0.1, point 0.3 kind of thing. So imagine this is what the PSCF. This we need to carry forward to the animal model. In the next class, we will discuss the introduction of autoregressive model and the moving average process and how the AC, SCF and PSCF concept are being used there to evaluate, to calculate the AR model and MA model or ARMA model that we will discuss in detail. Thank you.